What's up guys, Steven here. Welcome back to another video. And today we're taking a closer look on how to set up the iPolo V1 Mini SE. So that's another long name for a pretty great home miner because it's near silent. It has a very good efficiency, 220 megahashes per second plus minus 10% at only 120 watts and a DAC size limit of 5.8 gigabytes. So today in this video, I will show you how to set it up, um, how to navigate the dashboard, how to actually start mining and yeah, let's go, let's have a closer look. And guys, I almost forgot to mention, there's also a raffle activity. So if you're looking into buying an iPolo miner, then make sure to check it out. Now, iPolo is giving away 50 200 US dollar coupons and all you have to do is just participate in the raffle down below. So good luck guys and definitely check it out. All right guys, so we're now here on the computer. I will guide you through the setup and show you how much I've mined. Now, between the intro I've recorded and the actual screen recording I'm doing right now is around about 30 days. So so actually, um, the timing of the previous video was not that good because it was right a few days after the Ethereum merge and um, it needed some time to see where um, the network difficulty and everything is going and also what are the uh, actual outcomes from the miner. But now today I can really give you some insights on what I have mined and the miner is still mining in the background and it is super silent. Now what I really love about iPolo miners is that it's super plug and play. Now you can mine on Wi-Fi or you can use um, the ethernet cable and it's in my working room. So usually I want it to be quiet here, but really the miner just a few times during the day, you can hear the fan spinning up a little bit if all the PCs are running, if it's really hot. But if it's like normal room temperature, you cannot hear this miner. And this makes it really amazing for home mining. Anyhow, I'll just show you what I've mined and also, um, yeah, um, what the actual outcome is. So first of all, maybe let's get started with the setup. So once you have connected it to your home network, the first thing you have to find out is the IP address to configure it. Now, iPolo has a software tool for it. It's the show ip.exe. But if you don't, don't want to use that, you can also use advanced IP scanner and it will just um, show up as iPolo and hostname, for instance, is fritz.box because it's my modem. And with that, you actually um, can uh, access the user interface. Now, you just have to note down that IP and put it into your browser. So I'll quickly log out to show you how it looks like. Now, um, you will see this screen actually, and if you don't change the password, which um, I just didn't do because it's in my um, home, then it's just root root to log in, and then you can already do the setup. Now, I really like the iPolo user interface because it's even simple for people who get the first time into mining. Now, what you can see here is you have the running overview. So this basically shows you your current hash rate. So currently I have 210 mega hashes per second. Now, if you have a closer look here, this miner is advertised at 200. At the pool, as you can see, um, I have also a little bit over 200, so it's more on the plus side. But um, ASIC miner um, manufacturer, they always write plus minus 10% because um, there is some kind of room during the manufacturing. So it could be a little bit lower, it could be a little bit higher. But for me, the miner is perfectly working as it's advertised. Now, the design memory of this miner is 5.8. So the design memory is actually 6 gigabytes. The available memory, 5.8. So I just put this in the DAG size calculator because I'm currently mining Ethereum proof of work, which gives me around about one year of runtime from now. But of course you can also mine um, other coins with that. So um, you can mine, for instance, Ethereum Classic. And if we go to ETC, oh yeah, ETC, um, if we go here to 5.8, as you can see, it would be around 2031. So the thing is um, that because of the fork, basically um, it took over um, the current Ethereum um, difficulty and deck. So if we put in here Ethereum Classic, as you can see with 5.8, it gives us a runtime until 2031. So there's always something you can mine with it, but it really depends on um, which will be the network, um, which really gets the most of um, hash rates and where the difficulty is going up and the deck size is increasing. And as you can see, the six gigabyte limit, it will be um, 2024. But if we just calculate the free memory of 5.8 gigabytes, just to be sure um, on Ethereum proof of work, we get to round about end of next year. All right, guys, um, that's regarding um, the specifications of the miner and the power consumption is really just round about 100 watts. So um, 
it almost drains nothing. You could even do solar mining with it. Um, just power it from solar and really you don't have any running costs or any huge running costs on this miner. All right, but let's go back to the user interface because in this video I want to show you how to set it up and how much I've actually mined. So um, the fans are all the time running with 2500, but um, you barely hear them. I expected with over 2000 RPM that you can really hear them, but nope, I can really hear nothing from this miner, which is pretty cool. Temperatures, my room is pretty hot because of all the electronics, so we're looking here at 50, 50 plus degrees, which is perfectly fine for the ASIC chips. Um, we have here an information overview, so here you can see the firmware version. Now, I didn't update yet, I think there's already a newer version from iPolo, I just need to check it out, but it was running fine, so there was no need to upgrade for me. Now, um, you have to set up here your pools, user information. Now, I use F2 pool, but basically you can use any pool you want to do that. But F2 pool is for me the most convenient, and also in this tutorial here, I'll show you how to set it up with F2 pool. Um, the minor configuration is actually right over here. So um, here you set the pool, you set the worker, you set the password, and here you can choose between Ethereum coins, which also works with Ethereum proof of work. Um, and also, as you can see, um, you can switch back to ETC if you want to, but you just have to do the select coin switch right over here. There's also API allow configuration, but if you don't know what it is, just don't touch it because you will not need it. Of course, you can also give um, the miner static IP if you want to. I just keep it on DHCP. With the tool, you can find out the IP address in literally a couple of seconds, which is pretty easy. Before we set up um, the pool, I just will show you the whole user interface so you can get an idea how it looks like. Um, there's a fan configuration. Um, I would suggest to keep it on auto mode, which makes sure just when it gets hot for whatever reason, the fans will just spin up, which is usually for me just a couple of seconds and then it turns down again. And this is really just a few times a day, so it's very, very silent and efficient. Now, um, you can connect it to uh, Wi-Fi, but because it's next to my router, I just um, went with the um, cable route, so Ethernet, which is for me, for my home network, more stable. But if you want to, um, it comes with Wi-Fi, with the Wi-Fi antenna. The Wi-Fi signal is pretty good, and on the V1 Mini SE, I think they even improved it because it's getting the full hash rate without a problem, also over Wi-Fi. Um, of course, you have logs, so if there is any problem, the iPolo support is actually pretty cool. They're really nice guys, and you just send them the log, and they get an idea on what could be the problem. There's also an error log. Um, don't worry, those are just random errors for starting up when there's something, but these are, are no real errors. Of course, you can change the password of the user interface um, if you want to, if some other people have access. You can upgrade the firmware right over here, just download the iPolo um, image from their website, go to flash image, choose the image and you're done. Then there are diagnostics. So you can see um, if your network connection is working, you can do IPv4 pings, um, NS lookups, um, you can reboot and you can log out. So in order to configure this miner, so once you come from nothing, you just unpacked it, you just connected to the network, you found out the IP, you're in the user interface, you have to do the pool configuration. Now, um, you need to choose a pool, but to be honest, F2 pool, for me, it's so convenient. I like the user interface. They have an app on the phone. So for me, this is working fine. So um, you can choose the coins, um, as you can see right over here, ETHF, ETH, ETHW, um, ETC. And um, as you can see here, um, I'm mining ETHW. And let's have a look at the results first. So I almost mined 3.8 ETHW, which is right now, if you convert this to money, not much, it's like 20 bucks. But um, for me, mining is a passion. It's something I want to do at home. Um, it's something I, I power this thing also partly from solar. And when I have my solar, it just costs me nothing. It's a little bit of a heater even in, in the winter. And um, this is on, on the pool. So um, within 30 days, it's around about 3 ETH, as you can see. So um, if we have a closer look here at the hash rate, um, as you can see, it's really, really stable. So we are looking here all the time over 200. There are no drops below. Now, what I really love about Apollo miners, they are not only silent, they also work very reliable. So the 24 hour hash rate, as you can see, over the 200, so perfectly where it's advertised at. And yeah, um, three ETHW. You can also put it in any calculator, like 200 in the ETHW calculator. As you can see from the ROI side, um, it doesn't look good right now because um, 
the price of ETHW is very low. I think it's undervalued right now because ETHW could be at least um, a bigger fraction of ETH because it, it basically offers the same features, has a huge community behind it. Now, this is not any advice, but I'll just keep mining it and see where it goes, um, my personal point of view. Of course, you could also do try solo mining. Now, what um, Ipolos can also do, which many people don't know, is you can actually configure them to solo mine, for instance, ETC. I haven't tried it with ETHW, but um, I think I'll maybe give it a try for the next video so um, we can see, can you actually find some blocks with an Ipolo miner? which would be also a cool kind of lottery ticket, but the block reward now um, with ETHW, I think it's around about two, so it's not that much, but still um, it's it's like the same what you get in 20 days of mining. All right, um, but now let's have a closer look on how to set it up. So um, you need the pool URL, so you can find that on the um, F2 pool. If you switch, if you log in, if you create an account and choose um, ETHW, any coin you want to, you just scroll all the way down and here you find the pool URL. So you copy the thing, um, the whole URL with the straight 10 plus TCP and the port number. Don't um, copy what is in those brackets because this is just a backup port. And when you're in um, the Apollo pool configuration, you just paste the link with the port right over here. And um, the worker name is actually your account name. So as you can see, it's tech magnet. So the worker name is also tech magnet. Password, you can put anything you want to, just one, two, three, or X. And you can set up up to three pools. That means um, F2 pool with the backup ports, as you can see, so just port here switched. If it's down for some reason, it just uses the other port. And that's basically it. All you have to do then is save and apply. And after that, I like to reboot the whole system. So I go to system reboot and it already starts mining automatically. When you see it's mining, you will actually see that the hash board um, one serial, num uh, serial number right over here should be here. That means the hash board is properly detected and running. And once you go to running overview, you will actually see that it's showing um, the hash rate. Now, in the first 24 hours, um, you will experience some ups and downs because um, it needs to adjust. And also, um, in the beginning, it needs to create the deck size, which can take some time. So don't be worried if in the beginning there are some weird numbers. But after 24 hours, you should already see some stable results. And after that, you don't have to do anything. It's just running. I never had to reboot this device. This is really one of the most stable miners um, I used for home mining. Okay, and basically, guys, that's the whole setup. So it's pretty easy, as you can see. Um, you don't really have to do much. That's the cool thing about it. Now, um, F2 pool, as you can see, um, is there something else I can show you? Yeah, um, we're looking here at 3 ETHW a month roundabout. So not that much, unfortunately, but let's see where this is going. If we um, check this out in the profit calculator, um, you see it's 17 18 dollars per month but if ethw goes to a hundred bucks which is possible in the future you're looking at 250 300 dollars a month if you don't sell the coins so i don't think it makes sense right now to mine and sell the coins but it could make sense to just mine if you also like mining as a hobby like me and then keep the coins maybe get like 20 30 in a year price goes up and you have a profit and even the price of the Apollo miners, it didn't drop. So they're still reselling and selling on various websites and even on the Apollo store for the retail price it was before the merge. So I could even sell this miner right now for a grand. And yeah, um, I think actually for home mining, it is plenty of fun. And yeah, um, there's also solo mining for Ethereum proof of work. Now, I haven't tried out yet how it works because I think you have to do some different commands right over here um, with your wallet address, create a wallet. And I need to check out with the iPolo support if it's supported with the latest firmware version, but um, I guess it is so. And this will probably be a topic for the next video. Anyhow, um, this is how you set it up. Um, as I've told you, if you have any problems, um, the Apollo support is actually um, pretty cool. You can just write them. I wrote them on um, an email or also on Twitter and they were just getting back to me on Skype really fast and checking out what went wrong. And in the end, it was just a misconfiguration in my network. 
So overall, I'm actually quite happy with the miner because it is so quiet and I think now the availability is probably quite good. So let's see where this goes in the future. Um, just my um, opinion on that, I'm not selling my coins yet, I'm just mining and I'm just keeping them and maybe I switch to solo mining for fun because um, not many people are doing it right now, maybe the chances are quite good and let's see where this is going. Alrighty guys, so if you have any questions about the um, Apollo um, V1 Mini SE then just write a comment down below in the description. Overall I think for home mining this thing is quite a lot of fun especially if you have solar. So um, let me know what you think and yeah, see you then in the next one. Alrighty guys, so we're now here at the end of this video. Um, if it was helpful, then please like and share this video. And if you have any questions, write also a comment down below. Now, if you're interested in the iPolo Miner, um, I will also leave you some links down below in the description. So make sure to check it out. There's also a discount code. So make sure to check this out as well. And if you want to support me, then just have a closer look at the link there and maybe even use my discount code. As always guys, big thanks for watching this video. And yeah, let's have a little discussion in the comments about mining. What do you think about it? And as always, I'm Steven from Tech Magnet and I'll see you in the next one. Have a nice day and bye.